Good evening, welcome to Mike's Game Domain. You are going to be playing Ark Survival Evolved with me, uh, Mike. This is a game that's not due to release until at least a year. And um, it's already in really good shape, so it's created a tremendous buzz and uh, I'm really enjoying it. So I wanted to make some, uh, some play along video footage for you guys to enjoy with me. So my kind of style uh, with, with these sort of videos is um, I try not to spoil too much. So I don't want it to be like a complete walkthrough where I go through every little tip and trick and uh, essentially ruin the game um, as far as surprises go for you. I just want you to get a feel for the game and enjoy some of the, uh, <laughs> some of the hilariousness that happens, such as this dodo bird dropping a deuce. So, uh, dropped by Dodo, level one. It's a consumable. Uh, that's debatable. So, um, yeah, so this is the Dodo bird. And I just punched it a couple times. Yep, you can kill the Dodo bird. Oh, hello. All right, so I've already recorded the very beginning video and uh, the audio was garbage, there was an echo on it, so I'm not going to be redoing it from scratch. Basically I am now level 8. This is my character, Roy. He is, um, as you can tell, extremely stocky, very well built, I mean just a, a husky gentleman. No, I'm kidding. I made him pretty small and weak and kind of older looking, I guess and uh, clearly gets a decent amount of sun, etc. Um, I found that in the game the buildings are really short uh, as far as like the head height and so if you pick a tall character or even a normal height character you tend to not really fit in the structures. So I went with a shorter character for the sake of um, just fitting in the buildings. You can't adjust like the ceiling height so that's just something you have to deal with. If you make your guy super tall, you're going to feel like you don't fit in your own home, which I don't enjoy. So the button I'm mashing as I run around is E. E is the default for gather, at least right now, or interact, I guess, interact with the world. <coughs> These bushes, <coughs> excuse me, These bushes give you uh, berries and also fiber. On the ground, they're rocks. You can pick those up. Uh, let's see. Some of these are just decoration. There's a rock, nope. All right, well, there's a rock. <laughs> I leveled up just looking for a rock. There we go, picked up a rock. Um, you're, you're essentially just gonna be gathering resources in the beginning of the game um, and, and crafting. Like a lot of survival games, that's just how it goes. You have this, which is awesome. Um, referred to as an obelisk uh, by most people. It's just a big floating alien spaceship. Man, this thing is loud, shut up. Uh, these are the animals I've tamed so far. I have a um, Myrtle, the turt, excuse me, Myrtle the turtle. It's not actually a turtle, it's a Carboniminus, Carboniminus, I don't know, something like that. Um, hold on, we'll get you the real thing. So, tribe, nope, not tribe, survival. It is a Carboniminus. I was really close. All right, sorry if that was a little bit of a jolt. Um, I'm going to be interrupted here and there. I have a family and such, so that's just part of it. But uh, yeah, let's jump back in. Um, this is your inventory interface. You've got all your stuff, your inventory items. These are all things I've just kind of picked up, walking around picking up stuff. And then you also have craftables. And this uh, tab over here, which are the things that I, the engrams that I've learned how to make. So new technologies, new gear, things like that. And yeah, that's kind of your main inventory area. These quick item selections are just useful for lots of things. We'll go through that a little later. This is your character. As you change clothes, you get to see what they look like in real time, which is kind of cool. You can double click it and it'll, it'll shoot it over. I don't have a hat yet. Um, yeah, survival profile will show you the different creatures that you've interacted with. Um, I reset the world, the arc, um, but it didn't reset some things, such as my map and the survival profile. So you'll see, I haven't actually, in this playthrough, interacted with all these animals, but it saved it from a previous playthrough, so that's that. 
Uh, here's your equipped items, your stats, uh, yeah, your stats, and then here are your ingrams, which is like your knowledge base and your also stats, I guess. So when you level up, you'll get this green thing at the top that tells you to go do stuff, and then you can upgrade one of these um, stats. So they're all pretty useful, honestly. Um, early in the game, I tried to bump health and weight. Weight is how much you can carry in your inventory before you become encumbered. Um, in the beginning, you're gathering a lot, you're crafting a lot. You may or may not have any um, helper dinosaurs yet, so weight is very important. And health, of course, is very important because dying is kind of like losing. Um, you get engram points every time you level up, which allows you to choose a learning path, basically. It's not really a path, it's just you can learn new stuff. Um, all sorts of cool stuff. Some of it's a little more decorative and silly, like paintbrushes and flags. Some of it's definitely critical, such as, um, you know, weapons and buildings and things. So it's really up to you what you want to get, which I like. Um, on the servers with multiple people, you'll notice that some people are leveled specifically for building, some of them for, for hunting. And as you form a tribe, you kind of have hopefully uh, synergistic qualities where uh, you cover all the bases as a team. Where Because I don't think you can actually cover the entire uh, Ingram uh, tech trees on your own. And they do that on purpose to encourage team play. So, I actually found a Fiomia saddle in one of the supply drops, so I'm not going to learn that one because it uh, takes six Ingram points. Um, and this blood syringe is really useful. And we'll go ahead and buy that. Uh, learn Ingram. And you've now added Ingram blood extraction syringe to your, uh, to your database. And now when I go to craftables, you'll see that... Um, yeah, there it is. You'll see that that's an option. I can now craft that and use this on humans to extract their blood for transfusion. Basically, you generate um, health packs. Really, really useful. Um, it does take. Here's your. Uh, sorry, your crafting requirements are hide and chitin or keratin, which are all things you get from killing animals. Um, so we don't have any of that uh, chitin slash keratin yet. We will get some here in a little bit, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, so basically you, you use this little syringe and bag to store some of your blood. It does deduce health. I think it's like 25 health points that gets removed. And then whenever you use the pack that you've created, you gain back 20 health points. So it's not a one for one, but you can basically pre, you know, if you do it periodically, you can build up your, um, your sort of health health pack supplies. So your your creatures here, your um, pets, a lot of people call them, your pets will also level up and they have a very similar system. They each have their own inventory. Um, it says E to access the inventory. E also is how you ride things that have saddles. None of these creatures have saddles. So what I find is if you push F, um, F is to access an alternate inventory. So um, like fireplaces and storage chests and pretty much almost everything has an inventory which is kind of cool uh, that you can manage so also uh, pets so if I want to manage this inventory I could press E or I could press F and I just find that F is a lot more useful that pulls up Myrtle's uh, inventory Myrtle's my turtle you can see I've already filled it with uh, berries and rocks and tools and all sorts of cool stuff um, whenever food goes into an animal's inventory, it lasts longer. So if you hover over this food, you'll see that it spoils in basically 30 minutes. If I'm carrying it, it spoils in seven minutes, seven and a half minutes. So that's a big difference. So generally you want to store food in, um, in one of your critters inventories so it can last longer unless you want it to spoil, which sometimes you do. Also things that are heavy like stone and wood can be carried by, uh, can be carried by your your friends. That's what they're for. Oh, and they level up. So this uh, this green arrow that's flashing yellow and green means that this character's leveled up. And just like I did with myself, I get to choose which statistic to boost. Um, health is a, again health and weight are really useful across the board. 
Um, but there's a lot of reasons to level each of these, um, depending on how you're using the creature. For now, it's just going to follow me around, carry my stuff. I don't want it to die because it's going to have valuable things in it, so I'm going to boost health and weight. Those are going to be the two things that I focus on. Now with these critters, these are Dilos. They are um, Dilo... Dilophosaurus. Dilophosauruses. So they're Dilophosauruses. They are the spitting ones that killed the fat guy in Jurassic Park, as everyone seems to remember them. <laughs> uh, the little fins come out, which is really cool. And they spit like a blinding acid. Um, but they're not so useful for carrying things. Look, their weight is only 45. Mine was like 150, and the turtles was 250. So at 45, they can't really carry much, but they are terrific guard dogs and attackers, at least in the early game. So what I'm using it for is that I'm going to be boosting the health so that it can engage in combat and survive, and also the melee damage so that it can do a lot of damage. So 200 is, is pretty low health, so that's a concern. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and boost the health for both, of, for both of my Dilos, and I've named them after dogs since uh, in the dossier, let me pull it up. In the dossier it says that they are, uh, because of their skill, because of their shrill cry and their ability to attack intruders from range, Dilof sources seem most suited as guard dogs. So since the game told me they're guard dogs, I went ahead and named them dog names. So we got Pooch and Spot. And I'll have a little pack at some point. Uh, okay, so if you hear these whistles, that's me... Uh, commanding is that white yeah that's me commanding my team here uh, there's a several different whistle commands that you can use um, I basically use two toggles I toggle following and not following so they're not following me now they're following me and they will actually once the AI logic kicks in they will actually follow me come on okay here they come um, and then the other thing that I toggle is their, basically their attack. So if you look at the stat here, you have um, following Roy at the bottom. And you have aggression level attacking your target. If you hold E, you get this radial menu. Uh, whenever we eventually play this game on console, you're going to primarily be using these radial menus to manage things. It works okay, I mean it works fine, but it's definitely not as quick as uh, key presses on a keyboard. So I'm not going to really learn this system until I have to, because I just prefer the speed of, uh, of keyboards. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so the aggression levels. So the two that I use are attacking your target, which means uh, whatever I punch or attack, he, these guys, he and she, and this guy will all go and attack it, which is usually what you want. And then sometimes you don't want them to attack something, so I can toggle that to passive. So you'll see the aggression levels being toggled. Now this is such a useful toggle that what I've um, coded the um, uh, shortcut for is actually my mouse wheel. So when I roll my mouse wheel up, they all attack stuff, attack my targets, and when I roll it down, they go to passive. And that way I can very quickly stop them. Uh, whenever your teammates are attacking something that you don't want them to, to attack, it can cause a lot of problems for you. So you want a very quick way to just tell them to stop. And so for me, it's scrolling the wheel down, which is like, whoa, 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 you know, hold your position. And then whenever I want them to attack, I scroll it up and it's uh, go kick some butt. So yeah, so those are kind of the two toggles that I work with between th that uh, follow and, and um, aggression level. I'm pretty much able to micromanage them uh, well enough that uh, I get by. So, so there's that. And they're going to just follow me around. They're set to attack my target. That's kind of how I leave things um, in general. So if something, it, it's not just what I attack, but also what attacks me. So if something were to just pop out of these bushes and bite me, uh, these guys would jump in and, and help me win the fight, which is perfect. That's what they're for. So at the top of this hill, I have built a uh, pretty nice little, little hut. And uh, I chose to build it a little different than the game intended. These are actually door frames. You would put a door in the middle. Um, and I built it two levels high. But I like when I'm inside of my house, I like being able to see out. So I can see if there's predators, if there's an opportunity such as a supply drop that I want to go pursue. 
And also the game is just really, really pretty, so um, I like being able to see out there. Whenever this is completely caged in by walls, it feels very claustrophobic, and uh, and the textures are just not... There's not a lot of unique... You know, it's just, uh, I don't know, tiled. It's all tiled, so you're in this tiled world that's deeply enclosed, and you just kind of feels awful compared to this, where it's an open world, tons of detail, moving objects, and, and cool stuff like that, so... That's how I've chosen to do it. In the online gameplay, you wouldn't want to set up your house this way because then enemy players or even neutral players could just walk in and uh, jack with your stuff. So that's the purpose of actual doors and walls, is to keep things out. Um, but the I believe that these door frames will prevent um, non-player characters such as these dinosaurs from entering the house and messing with stuff. So. I'm just going with it. If something comes in here and kills me, I will change it, <laughs> obviously. But in the meantime, it, it works just fine. I put a campfire in here um, so I can cook food on. I don't really have any food at the moment. Oh yeah, I do. It's in the turtle. Uh, I don't really want to... Uh, I do want to cook the food. Alright, so I'm going to grab my two meat. Oh, that's sad. I need more meat. Um, put my berries in there. There's seeds. We'll talk about that later. They're not really that useful in the very beginning. Um, so to cook something, again, I'll push F. I could push E, which will light the fire, but I really want to get into the inventory, so I'm going to push F. And I can throw my, uh, my meat on there. Now I can light the fire. I have some thatch on there, which is like uh, kindling kind of thing, sticks from trees and such. And, um, and that is now cooking the meat. Now you might be wondering, this is a thatch hut, which is just, you know, kind of like a straw house, I guess. And uh, you would think that lighting a campfire right in there would be bad, but fortunately it does not catch on fire at this point. It may do that at some point, um, but it's perfectly fine to have my fire going in the hut, which is nice because at night that will provide light and I can actually see what I'm doing in here. Now one thing I do need to build is a bed. Um, there's something called a simple bed. I need wood to build one. Where's Myrtle? Come here. I'll grab some wood and I will craft a simple bed. And I'll put the wood back. And I'll put that back. Okay. So now that I have my bed, the bed acts as a spawn point. You have what's called a sleeping bag, which is a one-off spawn point where you die, you can respawn there, and then it, it goes away. And then the simple bed is a permanent spawn point. So as long as that exists in the world, if I die, I can sh uh, I can respawn right into my hut, um, which is nice to have a base camp. All right, this is probably done. Yeah, put out the fire that will save the rest of the thatch from getting burnt. I'll put my cooked meat into my quick uh, quick use inventory. Oh, you can also fast travel. It does drop all of your items, so there's a way to do that. But uh, right now, it's not really that helpful. So anyway, now I have cooked meat in my inventory. I'll go ahead and eat it. Yummy, yummy. When I push number seven, I'm uh, activating the item in the seventh slot, obviously. Uh, one thing that's cool, well, there's a couple things that are cool about the quick access. Um, I don't remember the name. Quick item slots. About the quick item slots, um, if you push and hold, it will give you information about that tool, which is very handy. It also tells you the repair requirements or the crafting requirements for that tool. So these tools will get broken over time and um, you might be like uh, trying to repair it or trying to uh, rebuild another one and not realize what is needed. I'm gonna kill that thing. Come on guys. So I just told him to follow me and attack just to be sure. I'll get up. Uh, spears break a lot so if I don't have to use it I don't really want to. He's stuck on it. No he's not. He's just hanging out. Alright so I've Hit him in the nose, and my Dilos have completely destroyed him really quick. Myrtle, you were useless. Uh, but you did um, carry my stuff to me, so thanks for that. I think he got stuck on that tree. So now I have this dead animal. What do I do with it? Well, you can either... Um, oh, poor guy. You can either hit it with an axe or a pick to harvest it. The pick will give you more meat, and the axe will give you more hide. Uh, hide is incredibly useful. 
and you'll see that I'm tr I'm harvesting for hide, but I'm actually getting a lot of meat anyway. So I'd usually just go with an axe, unless I really need a lot of meat. So yeah, so that was very productive. Uh, from one dead animal, I got uh, I think like really these guys get stuck on everything. You have to cut them loose. Hopefully that's going to be fixed soon. That's a, a major problem with this game is animals being stuck on small trees and rocks and stuff. Um, the reason is it breaks... Um, there's, a, there's a lot of problems. Obviously your friends have trouble following you, especially the larger creatures. And um, you also find random bad guys... Uh, not bad guys, but... Um, you know, dinosaurs that are stuck on things, and it lets you tame them. You can easily knock them out. Like, say it's a um, a carnivore. Well, normally if you punch it in the face, it will basically kill you. But if it's stuck on a tree, you can use a slingshot, throw some rocks at it for a while, and knock it out, and very uh, very cheaply attain it. That's actually how I got this guy, uh, Myrtle. He was stuck on a tree. I used my slingshot. And I hit him in the head a couple times, and then he passed out. Once they're unconscious, you basically hand feed them back to health, and that's how they become your pet. You've tamed them. Um, they're pretty dangerous. The turtles are actually pretty darn dangerous. They uh, can kill you in the early game. But uh, since he, he wasn't able to move to attack me, I was very easily able to overtake him. And so, yeah, that was cheap, and um, I wish that weren't the case, but I'm also kind of glad that it is, because I have a turtle now. But, um, but yeah, so once that's fixed, it'll be much harder to, um, to knock out uh, some of the more difficult animals. Alright, how's my meat coming along? Three, not bad. We can roll with that. Uh, what I can do is actually, oops, escape. What I can do is take some of the thatch out of here, and I'm basically limiting how long it's going to burn for. So it'll burn this 18 thatch, and then when it's out, the fire will go out. And um, and that way I'm not burning just a ton of thatch. Although thatch is easy to come by, it probably doesn't even matter. There's a stegosaurus. They are really dangerous critters. I'm not going to go mess with him. Is that a Fiomia? I don't know. It looks like it. So the next character that I want to tame... Alright, yeah, you guys just stay here. I'm gonna go off on my own for a little bit. The next character that I want to tame is a Fiomia. Oh, I need rocks. Uh, and the reason is that I actually found a mount. Two mounts now. For the Fiomia in a supply drop. That's too many rocks. There we go. 46, that should be plenty. Yeah, I got a, um, I got a mount, um, a saddle, excuse me, well, I couldn't say that, a saddle for the Fiomia, um, I didn't craft it, I haven't learned it, but I have one, so this is a level 8 Fiomia, these things run like the devil, so it might be really hard for me to knock it out, um, let's just give it a shot, so I'm gonna use my slingshot and hit it with some rocks. If you hit it in the head, it's way more effective. Oops. Uh, okay, good. It's stuck. Don't climb the rock. Oh, oh, no. Don't climb the rock. Don't get away. This is hard. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, that's a problem. See, these things are really fast. And um, I don't have a ton of stamina to chase it. And it's going into the darkness, which I don't want to be. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Basically, I the, my only chance of catching this thing is if it gets stuck on a rock or something. Because there's no way I can outrun it. It's way too fast. Oh, and my slingshot just broke. And there's a large predator. Oh, I don't want to give up. I think I might have to give up here. Because I can't get my slingshot repaired without wood. What's going on? Why am I dying? I am hungry. Okay, no problem. I've got cooked meat on me. I'll eat some of that. Quickly grab some wood. 
And this is probably at this point a lost cause. I'm crafting my slingshot back. Oh, it crossed the river again. Dang it. Okay, well, I guess I can still chase it. Um, there's fish in here, but they're not dangerous fish. Oh, come on. All right, I'm going to punch you. Actually, if it passed out right here, that would be really inconvenient because um, it would be really hard to tame. But, oh, it did. It totally passed out right here. Okay, well. <laughs> okay. Let's hope that giant predator doesn't come over and just eat it. You know, I didn't bring any berries. Fioma's eat berries. Uh, I don't know how this is going to go, honestly. But, um, yeah. Just as a proof of concept, I did knock it out. <laughs> and I'm out of energy. And it's somewhere over there. It's probably going to die of, uh, of drowning anyway. Ah, oh, whatever. Silly Fiomia. Um, eventually you'll get tranquilizing arrows, a bow and arrow with tranquilizing arrows, and that helps tremendously with things like this, where you can just uh, stick it a few times with tranquilizers, and then it will drop, and you can go ahead and tame it. You don't have to chase it down for miles. Oh, my word. I have no stamina, which means I'm sinking, which means I could suffocate. Luckily, this is a pretty short crossing. Come on. Come on. Wow, this is boring. Alright, I crossed the river. That took forever. Let's uh, grab my turtle. Where are they at? There they are. So, come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on. I should have probably brought him with me. That would have been smart. Let's see. Maybe. Maybe I can still tame that thing, but uh, most likely not because it's been too long and my turtle is so slow. There's not a lot I can do. I'm hungry again. Jeez Louise. I'm already out of food. Alright, here we go. The turtles actually swim really well, so it can move quickly in the water, but I don't. Come on. Come on. Alright, here we go. Cross the river. Getting a jumping start this time. Speed up the crossing. Another turtle stuck on a tree. See that a lot. Fume is over there. Bad guy's over there. Come on. Come on. Oh, you know what? I could just grab the berries. Come on, Myrtle. Oh, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Oh, is that a mega piranha? I don't know. Something attacked him, that's weird. Probably a piranha. There's piranhas in the water, of course, because everything wants to kill you in this game. Oh, I did have some berries. Um, I probably don't need narco berries, but there they are. Alright, so I'm going to run ahead, try to feed the Fiomia. I'm actually going to tell my guys to stay here. Let's see if I can find him. Nope, that's a fish. That's nothing. Oh man, I don't remember where he got knocked out. Of course it's nighttime and I can't see anything. That's not a dangerous dinosaur, thank goodness. Um crud. I think it was further in. Maybe over here. Huh. Well, Maybe it just got killed. Wait. Fish. What are you? Are you a rock? You're a rock. Huh. Alright, well, I didn't keep really a strong mental note of where that was, unfortunately, so... I might have just lost it. Alright, well... That's, uh, that's survival games for you, you know? Hmm. Yeah, I don't really want to go anymore. Uh, I hate being underwater. I'm starving. Golly. My guy is so hungry. Hmm. Huh. And I'm out of stamina. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm starving. Okay, well, that pretty much ended the Fiomia thing. Alright, moving on. So if I had found the Fiomia, and I had fed it berries, it would have begun to trust me, <laughs> and eventually would have become my pet. That's kind of the idea. And hold on just a second. Okay, sorry about that short interruption. I'm starving to death. So I'm going to eat the berries that I was going to feed to my Fiomia. Probably shouldn't call it my Fiomia since I didn't actually tame it. Alright, there's that, there's that, there's that. Um, well, shoot. Yeah, I guess we'll just go back home. I can tame another one of these. But, um, okay, you know what, the, honestly the Fiume is not that great of a mount. Um, it, it's a fine mount as far as getting around, but it doesn't have a ton of utility. It doesn't like harvest berries all that well. You can push over trees, but um, I don't find trees hard to harvest. And you get way less, um, you get way less like yield if you don't harvest it yourself. So that wasn't very difficult, I don't mind doing it. Alright, so yeah, not really going for a Fiomia then. I think what I'll do is I will build up my base a little bit, level up. Just kind of wander around. And break my tools. Because that's what you do. And then we will um, hopefully reach level 25. <laughs> Until level 25 there's not a ton to do. You're just kind of surviving. 25 is when you become able to saddle a um, trike. A trike is a triceratops. And at that point, the triceratops is used to harvest berries. And um, I'm encumbered. Of course I am. Yeah, it, it lets you really like mop up berries really quickly. And so it changes how fast you can, uh, you can acquire berries, which berries are tremendously useful, as you will find watching this game. Alright, so I should have some cooked meat in here. Yep, I did run out of thatch. For those last four spoiled meat. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of done with the hut. I mean, I could continue to improve on it, but um, it's thatch. It's, it's not that great in the first place. Um, let's see, stones, I don't need those. Wood is heavy. Wood and stones are really the heaviest things that you carry around. So I'm putting the berries in there just to preserve them. The rest of the stuff is so light, it uh, it doesn't even. What? Um, okay, let's do that. No. Why can't you? Are you full? You are full. Oh, that's interesting. So, the weight is 249 out of 250. Basically, he's full, and it doesn't let me put anything else in them. No, no, it does. No, it doesn't. Okay, good. So previously, um, what I used to do actually is you could put unlimited amount of stuff in your um, in your animal's inventory, and it would encumber them to the point where they couldn't move, but they could be basically a permanent um, storage chest for an unlimited amount of stuff, and that was super useful as you might imagine, but also kind of cheap. So it's kind of cool that they did this. Now, uh, and I guess it was today they updated it, where once the uh, weight is full, the uh, creature can no longer take on more stuff, which makes sense. Now, can he move? He's full. Usually when you're full, you can move just really slowly. Eventually, you're not, you're not able to move at all. So I'm just curious about Myrtle. Where, where he's at? Ah, oh, everything's breaking. What do I need? stone. Alright, so one thing I have learned, I don't think he can move. Um, it's a good idea to keep a few of like everything in your own inventory because your tools will break and you have to rebuild them and uh, and so so on and so forth. So if you just if you get if you offload everything um, onto either a chest or um, you know or a critter 
you end up needing it constantly. So just kind of shooting yourself in the foot that you don't have it. All right, so I don't want more wood. What am I doing? I kind of want to go get that supply drop. It's been over there for a minute. It does disappear eventually. Um, I'll just run over real quick. So it could be something great. I got two saddles from these, and um, those are awesome. Even though I didn't, I wasn't able to tame a Fiomia. Um, oh, dang it. I kind of thought that might happen. Alright, well, I leveled up from running and failing and stuff. That's cool. No biggie. It was probably crap anyway. <laughs> That's what you tell yourself. Alright. Oh, you do poop. It's, uh, that happens. No big deal. Oh, look at my house. It's like glowing because the fire's on. Oh, there's another one. It's convenient. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I leveled up. So let's go ahead and knock out our level up. We're going to put it into weight. And, oh, I'm level 10. Uh, usually on every 5 or 10 levels, you can get access to, like, a major new set of things. So I'm going to check out what level 10 brings me. Probably wooden buildings and stuff and things. And um, mysterious music just kicked on. I don't know what for. It's just to set the mood, set the tone. All right, so I'm waiting. I'm just checking out, make sure there's no predators. I'm waiting for the uh, supply drop to make its way down. It's way up there. And in the meantime, we will go ahead and look over our Ingram points and see if we want to buy anything new. We have 14. Mortar pestle is really useful. Not yet. I really like the spyglass. That's actually something that I use a lot. Uh, oh, the compass is really good too. Both of these, though, you need. Um, I think you need crystal for one of them at least, which I can't get crystal yet. All right, so yeah, wood buildings, cooking pot, cement paste, the parasaur saddle. Parasaurs are really good mounts um, in the early game, at least. Wooden spikes are fun. Yeah, stimulants are really not that useful. Storage box. Um. Maybe a hat. Eh, I don't care about the hat. What do I want? Compass. Uh, you know what? I think I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to save my... Um, I'm just... Oh. Hmm. <laughs> my guy is so weird looking. Yeah, I'm just going to wait until I get uh, a little further in. All right, so it's the daytime now. See, like, for instance, that dinosaur across the way, um, I can barely tell it is a parasaur, but with the spyglass, you pull it up to your eye and it zooms way in. And so when you're kind of scoping out down the river or, you know, wherever, like say you're scoping out a supply drop, you can see really well what's around there, if there's any predators and stuff. It's really handy, actually. All right, so what do we got? Clothing, hey, I got a hat, see? <laughs> Uh, um, the other clothes, yeah, I'll take those. Cool. Why not? So I guess what I'll do is just um, craft things and just make, I don't know, make my house cooler, I guess. Foundation, we'll do more of these. We'll do uh, roofing. Yeah, that's, I don't know, why not? I gotta do something. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna need to grab some stuff out of Myrtle. Because he's holding my wood. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, so. Ooh, let's make a huge fortress. Wow, I'm mega encumbered. Okay. It's going to take a minute to craft. What you'll notice is that every time I'm building one of these, look at my XP. Experience points are jumping... Five? Yeah, five. Per um, structure. So considering I only need a little less than 100, that's only 20 structures to craft. And that's not including the kind of running XP that you get just from standing around. 
or actually like cooking food, killing stuff. I'm pretty sure everything in the game gives you XP. I haven't confirmed that, but it just seems like you just get it. But definitely crafting is the f is the quickest way to get it. So, my little hobbit man. Oh, I'm done. Okay. I got a bunch of those. Let's go ahead and place them. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, Alright, well, I have an extra one. Oh, I see. I put the actual um, engrams there, which is not what I wanted. I want these, the building supplies there. So let me build a roof and there. One of each. I don't want the engrams there, which is the, like the learning thing. I don't know how to explain that, but I want the actual item. Alright, there we go. So now I still can't move because I'm holding all my wood. <laughs> you know what? You can keep the clothes and the stone and the food so it doesn't expire. Well, spoiled food's not really that great. Probably gonna encumber this guy. Nope. I'll keep the spoiled food. I'll keep it there. Alright, yep. Let's uh let's build. I could build a second hut somewhere else. That would be actually probably more useful. Uh, yeah, let's go build a hut near closer to the um, the obelisk. Cause why not? I'm really curious what happened to that Fiomia now. I wonder if he just drowned. That's kind of messed up. I feel a little bad. Knocked it unconscious. Left it underwater. I mean, what do you think happened? <laughs> what do you think happened to the Fiomia? Leave me a comment and let me know. <laughs> There's no way for me to actually confirm. But, um, my guess is it died. Alright, again, swimming is really slow. Hey guys, oh no, did my turtle... There he is. No, is that him? That's him. He's just making his way over. They are really so You know, you can upgrade the movement speed, but uh, w what I found is the um, the type of each type of animal obviously has strengths and weaknesses. In the beginning, I tried to balance them out so that their weakest qualities would uh, get better, but I found that their weakest qualities were just always their weakest qualities no matter what, and their strongest qualities could be boosted tremendously. So a lot of times you're boosting, and I'll show you. You're not boosting like a number. Um, well, it kind of depends, but you see melee damage is boosted by percentage. So as you up the percent, that exponentially grows the, um, well, I don't know if it exponentially does, whatever. It grows it uh, a lot versus just bumping up. So taking it from health, you know, 200 to 210 is not a tremendous improvement, but the melee damage from 250% to like, 275% or whatever could be a huge jump. So anyway, looking at uh, Myrtle here, the movement speed is again based on percent. So if the movement speed is very, very slow and then you make it 170% faster, that's still very, very slow. It just doesn't make that big of a difference. Um, you're trying, it's a, you're fighting an uphill battle when you do stuff like that. You're never going to turn that turtle into a raptor. So you just kind of deal with what you got. Alright, so what I do know is as you get closer to these um, obelisks, you start to encounter tougher and more predators. I'm trying to map out the path so Myrtle doesn't get stuck on these trees. There we go. So I am going to be a little bit aware of that and careful. I'll get out my spears. Can I make a couple spears? I cannot. Alt 3. Okay, so if you push and hold 3, it tells you more details about it. If you push left alt in 3, it will actually craft additional um, items. So, in this case, I don't know what it takes to make a spear. It takes wood, stone, uh, wood, flint, and fiber. So all I need is wood, it looks like. I'm going to craft quite a few spears. A few spears, I should say because they can be used as a melee device, um, but they can also be thrown. So if I encounter something that I don't really want to get that close to, 
I can do a little bit of damage by throwing a spears at it. And that would be nice. Okay, I'm keeping a close eye out for predators. Because again, they are definitely found here. Let's look in the water. There's probably something ugly in the water. There is... Oh, it looks pretty good. Cool. Yeah, the game just constantly makes, like, creepy monkey noises. Oh, come on. Myrtle's stuck. Come on, Myrtle. Alright, maybe it'll get to me. Pooch and Spot are ready to go. And I feel like I'm encumbered. I'm not walking very fast. It's kind of scary, actually. Hmm. I won't know until I get up there if there's something bad, but up there on that surface is usually where there's a couple uh, a couple carnivores patrolling. So this would be kind of a neat place to build a base. It's not that much further away. Oh, uh, what's that over there? I don't know. It's not that much. It's not. It's not that different than my first base, but um, it is different. So. Oh, creepy music. Scare me. Come on, Myrtle. Alright, I might have to upgrade the movement speed of this thing. I wish you could upgrade the intelligence. Like, <laughs> that would be awesome. And then eventually it would just stop getting stuck on everything. That'd be nice. Come on, buddy. Just want to build my base. Alright. So, this looks like a good spot. It's, um kind of on its own it's flat so let's go ahead and dig in here I wonder if I could build it out that'd be cool like a little overhang uh, like that yeah let's see if it lets me no it doesn't I can do it a little bit I can do it like this so that way my base is kind of protecting me from falling in the water it's a useful base. oh no Really, Myrtle? Oh. Okay, well. <sighs> That's really annoying. Alright, so these guys are going to just sit tight. I'm actually going to pause the recording because I'm going to teach Myrtle how to walk up this path and then I'll come back. And I'm back. So I think I figured out uh, part of what the problem was. Myrtle was carrying um, something like 250 stone and was heavily encumbered. So even though turtles are slow, I had made this one extra slow by giving it lots of heavy stuff to carry. And it just, um, yeah, that was that was the problem. So that was my fault. It's not as bad as it seemed. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty quick. It can hustle along now, at least. There was a shark in the water, which uh, was scary because that turtle's carrying all my valuables. So I'm going to get it here, and then I'm going to tell it to stop following and it will just sit tight hopefully yeah there was a there was a megalodon circling down there I don't see it now but that was terrifying all right so continuing the build here that would be so cool if I could do that all right so let's do that let's do what do I do just make it even I could just make it super long that'd be kind of cool honestly though I would then prefer walls <laughs> to the door frames like my normal. Uh, what do I do, what do I do? Seven, I have a ton of these. Why did I make so many? Um, all right, well, let's just keep it coming. I have a couple of these. We'll do... Maybe I'll do those on this side, and then... Ah, um... oh, bummer. Out of stuff. He only has wood. I need thatch, don't I? Yep, wait. I'll put that in my inventory. Okay, I can make... I can make one of those.
So I can do that. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is build it so that I can walk in, have my little space, and then there's a wall there so I don't accidentally fall through <laughs> into the water. So actually a pretty useful little setup. Um, I'm going to go get thatch. Put anything that weighs anything on my turtle. The rest of this is fine. Yep, I'm going to run off and get thatch. These guys are going to stay here. And I think I'm just going to pause the game because it's just me cutting down trees. So I'll see you in a minute. All right, guys, just a quick note. Um, when you're harvesting stuff, such as thatch and wood, what I'm working on now, the um, actual item that you're crafting usually weighs a lot less than the ingredients that it takes to make it. So to really maximize your own inventory, uh, a good idea is to kind of craft as you go. So you're... Um, what do I need? A stone, I think. So you're, um, you're, you're cutting down trees, and at the same time you're making walls uh, with, the, with the stuff you've cut down, and you're actually able to carry a lot more this way. See, these are only 12, but uh, the stuff that it takes to make it is, uh, is, would be way more than that. So just a fun tip. I'm going to continue to cut down trees, and I'll, uh, I'll jump back when I'm back by the base. And I'm back. So I got a bunch of thatch. I built uh, seven walls. Sorry about the glitch there. Uh, eight excuse me, four um, door frames, and I was going to build a, oh, there we go, some roofing, uh, but uh, it wasn't letting me do it earlier, I don't know why. All right, so let's get the walls in place. These are, again, to prevent me from falling into the water, because I believe there are sharks there regularly. How many more do I have? I have three left, and I only need three. Perfect. I just guessed, so that's actually really cool. Alright, so I have my protective barrier. Nice. Uh, I'm not too worried about the ends, but I do want um, these things. Just for fun. Yeah, I really don't need those, but honestly, the crafting is just to gain experience. It, I'm not really going to use this base that much. So we'll put the, the roof on. Oh, he's cool. She's cool. Green and... Uh, I'm going to punch you out. Nope. Um, yeah, pretty though. Alright, so... There's that. It's hard to see. Uh... It does let you place these on top of each other, which basically just wastes it. So you kind of have to be careful with what you're doing. Alright, so not bad. I got a lot done. Oh, you'll notice that I did level up, so that's good. That was the whole point. So let me go to my inventory, and I will pick a level. I've got 150 health now and 140. I'm going to go ahead and make it 150 on weight. Now I can start looking at other stuff. Have I learned not just the same stuff. Nothing new. Alright, so moving on, I'm going to uh, continue to build and level. These guys leveled. I will bring in more health. You too. Get more health. And you, sir, haven't leveled yet. Um, I kind of want another bed. I'll put a bed over here so I can teleport back and forth. I need wood. You have wood. Give me your wood. Alright. Bed. If I want anything else, let's look. Have all my clothes. Oh, leveled up again. Perfect. That's what I was hoping for. Oh, wait. Yeah, that was me. I leveled up. Awesome. Let's put down the bed. I want the bed to be... This could be like a sleep section. And whatever else. And then this could be... Kind of the main area. This is way too big. <laughs> uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'll do the sleepy area right here. I'll put a wall behind it so it has some sort of protection. Seven, seven, seven. Come on. Cool. Yeah. It's my little sleeping chamber. Alright, so let's level up again. Alright, so now... I have been running out of stamina because I've been chopping wood. Food and water is definitely worth leveling because then you can last longer without having to eat 
and drink water. Melee damage, no movement speed, no. Fortitude's really good later on in the game. Hmm. Hmm. This is tough. <laughs> this is really tough. I guess some fortitude. So fortitude helps you survive in the elements, uh, like cold and hot mainly. Um, probably there's probably more to it than that, but um, that's kind of what I've used it for. And uh, it's going to be really useful in the beginning of the game because that's whenever I'm the most fragile. And also in the end of the game because when you start exploring caves, they tend to be very hot or very cold. So it's good to have. Good to have a little bit of that. Um, I love. Oh, the turtle leveled up. More health. More weight. Yeah. Ten. That's it. Oh. That was wasteful. Maybe more movement speed next time. I don't know. A, a turtle's just kind of good as it is. It doesn't really get great. Uh, it gets great health. If you level it with health, it can just live forever, but um, that's not really that useful. So. so we'll build one, two. What am I missing? I'm missing nothing. Uh, all right. Let's put these up. One. Two wood. All right, I got wood over here. Pan every time. And we'll craft. Uh, how many more did I need? Two more. Okay. Oh, two on the other side too. And some roofing. We're gonna need a lot of roofing. Hopefully, I can do that. Okay. One, two. That could actually be a wall, but I've already made the other thing, so... Because I feel like I could actually fall... No, uh, pretty close. <laughs> it's a little weird. Alright, so roofs. Wow, I made a lot of roofs. Um, let's go and kill my crafting queue, because I might have made too many. I know this is just for leveling, so it doesn't really matter, but um, I don't want to have extra for no reason at all. Four. I know I need at least four. I mean, crafting speed would actually be really handy. Like, leveling is too powerful to really waste it on that. But, um, it would be just a nice thing to have, I guess. Alright, I think this is the last one. Yay! Oh, we finished our little hut. Our big hut. Sorry. Cool. Almost didn't anticipate that getting done. So not too shabby. Have a bed, more could you want. Uh, maybe a fireplace. And no fireplace. Uh, yeah, of course not. I have to build it. I need stones for that. I just threw all the stones out from my uh, from my turtle. Myrtle, are you carrying any stones at all? No. Okay, so I need to go get stones. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. Well, whatever. No big deal. I've got a lot of rotten meat now. Yeah. Um, so this is pretty much the early game. I mean, you're just getting supplies, crafting things, leveling up. You can definitely go exploring. Um, but until you get a mount... I'm going to turn these guys... I'll tell you what. We'll get them over here in this area. Oh, you know what? I can just harvest for stone. Until you get a mount... Um, it's not... I mean, you can just wander around and explore, but it's a lot more fun when you have a ride. <laughs> you know, it's like walking versus driving. It's just, you can go further and, I don't know, it's more fun. More fun to drive. So, I've already walked around quite a bit. I don't really want to walk. I just want to build, level, and then once I can uh, start to utilize rides more effectively, then I will go on a really big exploration because I actually haven't seen the top half of the map It's a really big map if you haven't already figured that out. It's huge All right, I'm just getting stone for a fireplace. Let's pull up the map real quick uh, Yeah, it's huge and you can see that I've actually played this game like three or four times now not all the way through I, I think the furthest I got was level 40 maybe somewhere in there so you can get up to like 65, so I would call that about mid-game. Um, but I 
pretty much stuck to my bases and kind of the areas that I knew. I got lost a lot, so I tried not to just wander off um, because I would wander off and then get killed, and then I, there's no way I could find my way back to the body. I wish it gave you a little indication of where you were killed last on the map so you could uh, go get your stuff. That'd be pretty cool. Um, but there's a whole half of the map that I have not even looked at. So that's something I want to do. I'm um, getting pretty tired. It's late here. So I think I'm going to call it um, tonight. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we got kind of a lot done. And um, yeah, me and, the, uh, me and the kids are just going to hunker down and go for a nap. I'm going to lay down on the bed. Look at that. Put my axe away. Yep, thanks for watching. Um, like, subscribe. Please leave comments. Um, whatever suggestions you have, I'll definitely take into consideration. I don't do a ton of these videos. This is the first one. <laughs> you probably can tell. Um, so I'm up for suggestions. Anything you want to see, any kind of style you want to, you, me to take, I can definitely do my best to try. But I uh, hope you liked it. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.